Hello and welcome to another Elite Code problem. Today we're going to be doing the problem of the day for June 26th, total cost to hire K workers. And so in this problem you're given a zero index array costs where the index is the cost of hiring ith worker and you're also given two integers K and candidates. And K is actually how many people you're going to hire and then candidates is going to be what we're going to be working with. So we're going to be working with the first and the last candidates candidates and then if there aren't enough candidates in the array, then we just have to have the whole array. So let me actually show you what this looks like in this example. So we have the 17, 12, 10, 2, 7, 2, 11, 20, and 8. And so because we have four candidates, we're actually going to be initially working with four candidates on each side. So it's going to be these four and these four, it's the candidates closest to the end. And then pretty much what we're gonna do, so let's just say we have this result R, we're gonna take three workers, and then if they, if two workers have the exact same, uh, have the exact same value, then we're always gonna choose the left, like the leftmost worker. So in this first example, the first worker we're gonna take is either this one or this one, but remember we're always gonna take the leftmost one, so we're gonna take this one right here. So we're going to have this. Now this worker goes away and so now for our candidates we have to actually add this worker over here because we have to have four on each side. Now the second worker is going to be this worker over here. And now we have the whole array in our candidates or in our K so now well, there's nothing else to add. So now we just take the third most worker which is this eight I believe. Um, just double check here. So we have a two, a two, oh no it's actually the seven. So this is going to be the third one. So we have this 227 and we want to return 11 because that's the sum of all the workers. Okay. So as you can see, like we start with the leftmost and rightmost number of candidates, but then as we take more, once they start overlapping, then we can't really take any more, right? So once these two things happen, we can't really take any more. So we, we are going to have to check for that. So let's actually look at the second example. So in our array, we have this one, two, four, one, and so now here, the exa for example, Candace is three. So our leftmost three is here, and on our right, we only have one more. So it's pretty much, we already start with the entire array. We need three on each side. So if, so if candidates times two is greater than your array, then you already have the whole array. And now we want three workers, so that's pretty straightforward. So we want to take this first one, because that's the leftmost. Then we want to take this one, then we want to take this two. So we have one plus one plus two, and the cost should be four. And so... Let's get some intuition for this problem. For one thing, we do need to know that, yeah, for this first example, once we are not of numbers, uh, it says right here, right? So once you're not of numbers, if there's fewer candidates and workers remaining, choose the worker with the lowest cost among them and break the type of the smallest index. So pretty much what we're gonna have to do, it's, it's kind of straightforward. We're gonna have to have, uh, it's gonna be actually really easy. What we need to do is we're gonna have some number of candidates. So let's just say, say we have like 10 or something, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And so let's just say we have 10 candidates, their values can be whatever. And let's just say for, or like 10 total costs. And let's say the candidates here is like two, then we're gonna have the two left most. So pretty much and K is whatever number, let's say it's three. Pretty much it's going to be straightforward. We're going to have to check the leftmost element in this, not the leftmost, the smallest element in this, and the smallest element in this. And if the smallest elements are equal, then we're going to take, you know, we're going to take the smallest element in the left, whatever like container we're using to hold, because that index is going to be smaller. So we're literally going to check for the smallest, the smallest element in both of them. And then we're going to take the one that's in the left if there's a tie. Otherwise, we can just take the very smallest one. And then once we use some element, so let's, let's say we take this one, then we need to take whatever side we took it from and add another and add another candidate. And we keep doing that. So like, let's say we use this, we add another candidate. Let's say we use this, we add another candidate and so on. And then there will come a time where they will overlap. And so when, once they overlap, you can't take anything else. So we need to handle that, right? So. So like now here, this left and this right are actually taking up the whole rest of the array. So now like, let's say we use this, we can't take anything else. So we do need to check for overlapping and it's gonna be pretty straightforward. We can just have an index of this left container and this right container and just make sure that if we increase one of them, it's not gonna be overlapping. So that's one thing we need to do. Now, another thing we need to do is we need to figure out if there's a tie, let's get the one with the smallest index. So you could do this one of two ways. You could use two heaps here. So you could use a left heap and a right heap 
and you would just take the smallest element in the left heap and the right heap and then if they're tied you always want to use the one from the left heap because the left heap is going to be the elements that have the smaller index so that's one thing you could do alternatively what you could actually do and let me show you how you do this is instead of using two heaps we could actually use one heap and we're going to add one more dimension to our numbers and pretty much all we're going to do is we are instead of just heaping the the cost instead of so instead of having a heap with one two and nine ten we're going to heap the cost and the index so we're going to have the cost here and then we're also going to have the index and the array and therefore if we have two costs with the same index like let's say we have one at index zero and then we have one at index five when you actually pop from the heap because these two are equal it will compare the second element so it'll do the job for us of always getting the one with the smaller index so if you heap, so if you heap pop from this from a heap that has both of these it will always return the smaller index if there's a tie so that could do the job for us so all we need is we need a heap and then we need to put the elements from both sides into the heap and then we just need to have some kind of pointer saying like this is where the left candidates ends this is where the right candidates ends and then we need to also figure out from when we when we pop from the heap we actually need to figure out okay what's the index we popped so let's say we popped index like so what is this let's just say this is like index nine so we popped something you know with index nine and value whatever two then we'd say okay so we need to figure out wh which which side we popped it from and then we need to modify we need to modify the pointer and then we also need to check do we need to add something else so like let's say we pop this element it's going to be from this right side so this is going to go away now we need to move this arrow over here and then check have we actually added this element before because like what if the left heap was already over here then you can't add anything else so we need to check is this element actually outside of range of this and if it is we can add that in and we can move our pointer and so that we would get we would pop this use the output and then we would we would add this, let's say this is an eight, add index eight or whatever it is. So it's pretty straightforward. All we need is just a heap. And then we need these two arrows to symbolize where the left and the right side ends. And then to see if they're overlapping. And if they're overlapping, like if this left is greater than the right, like let's say this is the right. If the left is greater than the right or equal to the right, then like we can't add anything else. And we just keep doing that K times. And K is guaranteed to be smaller or equal to the length of costs. So we're never going to like run out of elements in our heap because our heap can hold cost elements and, and k is going to be smaller. Okay, so actually for this one, for the code, I actually have it written up beforehand just because I didn't want to make any mistakes, but I will definitely go over it and explain it all. Okay, so we have a heap and then we have this left end, which is symbolizing this arrow over here, which is like the, the left side of the, of the elements on the left. Okay, and we're simply going to enumerate the costs and we're just going to check. So in the left heap, when we make the left heap, the left heap needs to have candidates number, right? Like as you can see, if candidates is four, the, the heap needs to hold four numbers. So I just said, as long as the length of the heap is less than is less than the number of candidates, let's keep appending. Remember, we're going to be appending the actual cost and then the index. Therefore, when we have two things of equal cost, we're going to be able to get the winner there. And also we need the index to determine, is that going to be in the right heap or the left heap, even though we're only using one heap. And then as we put in values, we just update this left end to symbolize where it ends. So every time we put in a value, we say the left end is wherever we put that in. That's pretty straightforward. Now we do the same thing for the other side, for this right side. It's going to start at the very end of the, it's going to start at the very end of the cost array. And now I'm pretty much saying, so remember when we have one heap, if we have one heap and we have candidates, the most values that can be in this heap to start off is two times the candidates, right? Because the left side can hold candidates and the right side can hold candidates. So the most it can ever have is two times the candidates. So I just said, as long as the heap is less than two times the candidates, and also while this right start is greater than length, uh, left end plus one, meaning, well, when we're, when we're writing, like, let's say the left is over here. I just say, if the right's like here, we need to check this value. We need to check the value before the right. And that value needs to be bigger than left, meaning there's something else to write. Because let's say the right's here. Now I would check this value and this value is not greater than left. And that's because we've already written this value. This is where the left ends. So the right needs to be greater than left plus one, meaning the right need the right needs to be greater than the value over here. And so that's just to make sure that you're not overriding, you're not you're not writing multiple output twice. Like in this example too, if you actually, you know, did that for for the first three candidates, the left would do this. And so the left would be over here. 
and then the right, it can write this value, but then if the right's over here, you can't write this value. So write minus one for this, let me actually draw that. So, so for this one, two, four, one, let's say our candidates is uh, three. So the left would actually be over here after writing the candidates. The right would actually be the length of this, which is four. And so you check, is this greater than left? Yes, it is, so we can write. Now we move it over here and we say, is this greater than left? No, it's not. So now we can't write anymore. And so that's going to be that. Now we actually have um, the heap. So now we have the total heap with the left and the right, and we have the right pointers. Now we have our result. Now we want to heapify the heap because we want this heap to be sorted in order of costs. And then if the costs are equal, it's going to be it's the, the, the tiebreaker is going to be the index. And so now it's pretty straightforward. You just keep popping while you have K. So we need to pop K times. So we pop, we add it to the result, we decrement k, and then you have two cases. So you either have one case where the index is on the left side, meaning the index is less than or equal to left end. And so if it is less than or equal to left end, we need to check, is the left end, is there, is there room to write after the left end? I don't need that. Is there room to write after the left end? And if there's room to write after the left end, like in this case, if the left is here and the right is here, we can't actually write. But if we could, so like let's say the left was... Uh, over here and the right was over here then there is room to write so we're saying if the element is somewhere in the left side and there is room to write let's write and can and, you know alternatively if the element is on the right side and there's room to write let's say the left is over here if there's room to write let's write otherwise let's do nothing because we've already we've already written every single number that we could and so once we've checked everything once we know that everything is like we've checked what side every element's on and we've pushed as far as we could until the elements are actually overridden. So like in this example too, we would we would fill out the heap once and we would never actually call any of these heap pushes because it's already full to begin with. And so then once once the K is zero, we've we've gotten enough uh, employees, then we can just return the results are pretty straightforward. Run that. And as you can see, it runs. And so then uh, I'm sure there's like a little bit you can do to improve actual leak code efficiency, but as far as time and space, I don't think you can make it any better. Okay, so let's do the time and space complexity. So for the time, we're gonna be doing a bunch of heap pushes and heap pops, and how many heap pushes and heap pops can we do? Well, let's just say C is the number of candidates, and let's just say that uh, K is like the, the K number. And so worst case scenario, we're actually gonna be doing C plus K heap pushes and heap pops, whichever one's bigger because if k is bigger we're going to need to do k heat pushes and heat pops and if c is bigger we're going to need to do c heat pushes and heat pops these together combined uh like the max they can be is a length cost so worst case scenario we're actually doing cost amount so if you want to say that the worst case complexity here is actually length of cost that would be totally fine but anyway so we're doing that many and then for each heat push and heat pop what's the biggest our heap can be well it's actually going to be c because the heap can hold, remember the heap can hold two times the number of candidates max. And so this will be like 2C, but then this would uh, the two would go away. So this would be the complexity here for the time. It's C plus K times log of C. And you can, like I said, for the C plus K, worst case scenario, it's going to be the length of cost as well. Okay, now for the space, it's actually going to be what's going to be like the biggest, uh, like how big can the heap be? And the heap can just be C. It'll be 2C time, right? Or 2C because the heap can hold two times the number of candidates. And so that's going to be that for that. And yeah, hopefully, uh, I think that's it for this problem. I think it's pretty straightforward just using a heap. You could use two heaps if it makes it easier for you. And yeah, just maintain the pointers. And I think it's a pretty straightforward problem, not too bad. Definitely a little bit easier than some of the uh, problems we've had in the last few days. So that's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, then uh, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.